Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and today I'm here to do something on this channel I don't usually do, which is a book haul. As you probably know, I try to get as many books as I can from the library, but occasionally I do splurge and buy myself books, and in this case I bought 10. Now I bought these all because of a specific reason. You probably know the author based on the title that I used, but when I was a kid I used to read this author a lot. Like when I was 12 this author was my jam. So last month when I was on a live stream and Desiree from Lady Labra was reading one of these books and told me that she had found a lot of them for pretty cheap on thrift books, I decided to give it a try. I told myself I could only have a maximum of 10 and they all had to be under $5 because that's an American site and there's an exchange rate to Canada and then shipping so yes I set myself limits at least. She also let me know that there's now a Christopher Pike podcast which means that I'm gonna have to get into that once I reread the appropriate books. To give you some context I had a literal dresser drawer full of these books while I was in middle school. I had so many of these books that when I was in high school my dad said I had too many books and made me get rid of them. So I took the drawer to high school and gave the books away to whoever wanted them. I was very into horror books and movies at this time of my life. My very first email address was Horror Flick Chick. When I was picking out which books to buy, I made sure to get a bind up of my favorite series that I remember, and then also nine books that I'm pretty sure are all standalones. They're not gonna be like the second in a series and I don't have the first or anything like that. Hopefully, because I didn't actually research any of them, I just kind of judged based on the titles and the covers. So, let's see what I got, because by this point I've forgotten, except for that one bind up that I'm very excited about. Scissors! The other thing I'll mention before I even take these books out of here is I remember these books being like longer, and they seem fairly short, and I'm wondering if I used to read different editions or if they were in fact this short, and I just thought I was reading like 300 to 400 page books. Who knows? Our first package has three books in it. Let's see what they are. So our first one is The Visitor. I definitely remember these being longer. Like these are the size that I remember Fear Street being and I thought that these were a step up from Fear Street. Who knows? I'm going to read you the synopsis on the back because this is back when the synopsis was actually on the back of the book. I hate when it's blurbs. Blurbs don't tell me anything about the book. So on the front we have The Visitor. They did not invite him. On the back it says he was out of this world. Tom was not like a normal teenager. First off, he looked weird. He was too tall, too thin, and his hair was particularly white. Also, he had incredible eyes. When you looked into them, you felt like you were staring into deep space. Some thought he was from outer space. Almost everyone believed he was a nice guy. But was Tom really nice? Was he even human? Oh my god, these are gonna be so corny and I'm so excited for it. Yeah, these books are really little. Like, this is only 162 pages, and in the back it actually has an advertisement for Fear Street, which is the series I read before I got into these. And as another series, I would be willing to read again, mostly for the cheese factor. Next we have Wicked Heart, and I definitely remember this cover from when I was a kid. On the front it says, An Innocent Turned Evil. Ooh. Good to know. He did not want to kill. Dusty Shame was a high school senior and a serial killer. Already he has murdered three young women and he has planned more. Yet Dusty did not want to hurt anybody. There was something inside of him, or perhaps outside of him, that compelled him to kill. Sheila Hardat had lost her best friends to Dusty's insane attacks. It was her task to probe the clues Dusty left at the site of each of his murders. Clues that will point her into the past to a time when a large portion of mankind lost all sense of decency. There she will find the seed of Dusty's evil compulsion, the Wicked Heart, and the reason why it did not die the first time it was destroyed. Oh my god, these are so cheesy. Okay, again, just 244 pages, so at least this one's a little thicker, but I remember them being like 300 pages, so then again, that was more than half my lifetime ago, so who knows. Next we have Weekend. Saturday, they worked on their tans. By Sunday, they were working on staying alive. The dream became a nightmare. The weekend in Mexico sounded like a dream vacation. Just a weekend? Are these people just across the border from Mexico? I'll find out. Four guys, five girls, and a gorgeous oceanside mansion all to themselves. It should have been perfect. Except nothing was going the way they'd planned. 
There was a girl upstairs who was fighting for her life. The phone lines that went dead, and the explosion in the garage that could have killed them all. But not even that prepared them for what happened next. Because while they were getting some sun, someone else was getting revenge. And the terror wouldn't stop until the weekend was over. I also love that at least this one is from Scholastic. Does anyone remember buying Scholastic books in elementary school? Because this seems like the type of stuff I would have gotten in elementary school because I was weird and reading this type of stuff when I was real little. On to our next package. It's the biggest one, so I'm assuming it has the bind up that I talked about. <sighs> Cover on this one is uh, not great. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of holes in the cover, but I'll read it. Next we have Scavenger Hunt. Pray they don't find what they're looking for. The hunt was on. School was almost over. A secretive club on campus had organized a scavenger hunt for the entire senior class. In small groups and with the help of cleverly planned clues, the kids were led throughout the city and then deep into the nighttime desert. The sponsoring club has promised a wonderful prize for the first group to reach the goal of the hunt. But for Tim Carlins, a troubled young man who has recently lost his best friend, the hunt will become a nightmare. Led astray by his love for a strangely beautiful girl, he will wander far from the others and back into the haunted past, where the line between the living and the dead is blurred and broken. Next, we have Slumber Party, which is one of the ones that I've seen on the front of some of these books being like, from the author of Slumber Party, and it is the littlest one yet, at only... Oh, okay, 170 pages all the way to the end. There's like no blurbs in the back for anything else. It just ends literally on the last page. It was eight years later and it was happening again. It was a perfect weekend for murder. Lara thought the ski trip should be a blast. What's with these people going on vacations and getting murdered? The old gang was getting together again for the first time in years. What could have been better than six single girls out for sun and ski and apres ski, plus a huge house and warm fire? Even with the memory of what happened the last time, it looked like the perfect weekend, until things started to go wrong. It wasn't much at first, a snowman that melted when it shouldn't have, a weird phone call, but then somebody went out for one last run and didn't come back and the storm they heard about on the radio was getting worse. Laura thought everyone was up there for a good time, but she was beginning to realize that someone was up there for murder. Thank you, Scholastic. And here we have the bind up of the Remember Me series. Remember Me, the first book was my favorite book, and then the fact that there were two books after it was just wonderful. Yes, this is three books. This is a way newer cover than I was used to. If I can find it, I'll pop up a picture of the cover that's got her, the main character, I can't remember her name because I read this when I was like 12, uh, in like a yellow top and green pants or vice versa. I'm pretty sure that's the way it went though. Just like laying sprawled at the bottom of uh, an apartment building like on concrete. But I will read you the back cover so you know what the series is about. And of course, the front cover first. Her death will not go unpunished, and this includes Remember Me, The Return, and The Last Story. She won't let them forget. Sherry Cooper wakes up dead. The last thing she remembers is falling from a balcony during her friend's party. Her death has been ruled a suicide, but Sherry knows she was murdered, and her closest friends are the suspects. As she tries to find her killer from the other side, she discovers her friends may not have been so loyal to her after all. Now Sherry is not just out for justice, she's out for revenge. So yeah, it's a ghost girl solving her own murder. I loved this series. Next package. This one is Die Softly. He took a picture of death. Ooh, I think this might be the one that Desiree was thinking about. Oh yeah, this is one that Desiree and I talked about. Excellent. And this kind of stuff would not fly in current YA. He might have photographed a murder. Herb just wanted to photograph the cheerleaders in the school showers, because of course he did. He planted his camera high in the corner where no one could see it and rigged it to a special homemade timer. He did this Thursday night and he hoped by Friday night to have an exciting roll of film to develop. But a girl dies Friday afternoon. On the surface, it appears to be nothing more than a tragic car accident. 
but when Herb finally does collect his roll of film, he develops a picture that shows a shadowy figure sneaking up on the girl who dies, sneaking up on her with a baseball bat. It makes Herb wonder if the girl was dead long before the car accident. But unfortunately for Herb, he doesn't wonder if the murderer knows he took the picture. <laughs> Bury me deep. They buried Mike, but not deep enough. Come on guys, it's right in the title. The dead boy would not go away. Jean is on her way to Hawaii for a week of fun in the sun, but the vacation gets off to a gruesome start. The boy sitting beside her on the plane suddenly chokes and dies. Jean tries to push the incident out of her mind while she arrives on the island, but that's impossible. Part of the reason is because Mike keeps coming back to her in her dreams. Horrible dreams filled with cold blood. Two of Jean's friends are waiting for her in Hawaii, Mandy and Michelle. They have already made friends with two young men who teach scuba diving at the hotel, Dave and Johnny. Jean and Johnny quickly become friends, but there are problems in paradise. Dave and Johnny have recently lost a partner in the ocean. No one knows how he died. No one can find his body. But then Jean finds Mike's body. It isn't where it's supposed to be, and it seems as if it's still got some life in it. I know I definitely remember reading some that take place on islands, but I'm pretty sure they were like Greek islands, not necessarily Hawaii. But there's a good chance I read this when I was a kid. Last package. <laughs> the Midnight Club. Their stories became their lives. This one just throws it out there right in the first sentence. They were all going to die. Rotterham Home was a hospice for young people, a place where teenagers with terminal illnesses went to die. Nobody who checked in ever checked out. It was a place of pain and sorrow, but also remarkably a pace of humor and adventure. At the hospice was a group of five young men and women who called themselves the Midnight Club. Every night at 12, they met and told each other stories, tales of intrigue and horror of life and death, true stories, made up stories, and stories that fell somewhere in between. But one night, in the middle of a particularly scary story, these five people made a pact with each other that says that the first one of them who dies is to make every effort to contact the others from beyond the grave. Then one of them does die, and the story begins. The most wonderful story. The most horrible. This one's uh, got some cover issues too, but again, I knew I was getting very used books, so I'm okay with it. And our final selection is last act. The stage is set for murder. I definitely would have read this one as a kid because it's theater related and I was in a lot of theater in this time frame of my life. It was only a high school play until death walked on stage. Melanie was the new girl in town, a little lonely, a little bored. Then she auditioned for the school play and won the starring role. Suddenly, she had a whole gang of exciting friends. But these friends shared something that Melanie did not know. Something from the past. Something so terrible that none of them would ever talk about it. Until after the play's opening night, when the police came for the body and for Melanie. At first I thought she was smoking on stage, but it's a smoking gun, which is even better. I'm just gonna go through these quickly and see which one is the oldest. This one's from 1988. This one's from 94. 91. Also 91. 1985, winner so far. And I just lost a piece of this cover. 1989. 1986, my birth year. 1993. 1995. And then Remember Me was originally published in 1989. The return was in 94 and the last story was in 95. So there's my haul of late 80s, early 90s Christopher Pike books. I'm very excited to read these. Part of me also wants to take off the thrift book stickers, but at this point I don't know if they're load-bearing stickers based on that one cover. I might look for some packing tape for that one. How about you? Have you ever read any Christopher Pike? Or or if you haven't, which one of these sounds the most interesting to you? Let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I recently set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that is down below, as well as the link to my PayPal and my Amazon wishlist in case you would like to buy me a book. 
You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye! If these books are so tiny, how did I literally have a dresser drawer full of them? I must have had like 60 of them. Thank you.